Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing Comic Uno's Best Comics of the Week, and this is the show where I review all the comics I've read this week in one show. We go least favorite to best pick of the week and everything in between. And at the end of the video, we talk about the viewer's pick of the week, so be sure to let me know your pick of the week for a chance to be featured on the episode. I also do have a Kickstarter going on right now for Slice of Life. It's about an anime character that comes to life and falls in love with a high school cheerleader, so hopefully guys could go check that one out. But let's jump into it. This week I I had a pretty heavy haul, 12 books, a, a neutral to heavy haul, and there's a lot of those Night Terror books that came out, so we're definitely going to talk about if this is, event is worth it, especially because it is stopping the DC line for two whole months. Now let's start out with number 12, which is Captain Marvel Dark Tempest, issue one. You know, I haven't read a Captain Marvel book in a little while. I dropped the, the last series probably like halfway through, and I wanted to see where she was at. I know this is a mini series. It's probably building up to the next Captain Marvel series that's going to come out. So this is kind of more of an interlude. You kind of feel that. It does feel like an interlude. There's not much that progresses the character. There's honestly not much that really stands out to me in this issue, from the art style to just the storytelling. I just thought it kind of fell flat. So overall, giving that two stars, and that is number 12. Moving on to number 11, we're going to finally have that conversation about Night Terrors, uh, because number 11 is Night Terrors Ravenger issue one. This is actually the one I was most excited for, so I'm, I'm excited and interested to see what will hopefully become the number one spot for Night Terrors in the future. Don't know if I'm loving Night Terrors right now. And what's interesting is that this week, we actually got a whole slew of Night Terrors book. Again, we will talk about those as the episode goes on. But next week is actually the issue one of the event. So you're kind of reading these out of context, especially if you don't follow, you know, comic news online and you're just picking up these books in the comic books. So you're like, okay, well, why are they in dreams? What's going on? Maybe if you read the free comic book day book, you'll kind of have a gist of it. But it's, it's honestly feels a little out of place to start the week before the actual event without them being preludes. They feel like these books should have came out after issue one. And honestly, I just feel like it, it just stalls the stories of what actually has been doing well with DC Comics. You know, Batman's a great example. Like, I just want to follow a regular Batman story. I don't know if I need to see the Bruce Wayne parents die story again, but this time as a nightmare. And when it comes to Ravager, I find this to be really interesting. And the reason why I was excited for this book is because I like Ravager as a character, but also at least she doesn't have a series she's stalling. This is a, a time to get characters that just don't normally get a spotlight to find a series. And honestly, it feels like it was starting in the middle of a story, literally in the middle of a dream where she finds her younger self, a different version of her where her life was better. And then Ravager is like, okay, I want to protect her. And that's pretty much the whole story. It's kind of hollow, honestly, and the artwork really didn't do it for me here. Uh, so I don't even know if I'll pick up the next issue for this, even though this is probably the one I was most excited for. So giving that two stars and overall to answer the question no I don't think Night Terrors has been worth it to end the these not end but to stall some of these DC titles that did have a middle of an arc kind of reminds me a lot of the the previous storytelling of DC Comics that you know happened more towards the after the new 52 or I or even during the new 52 where I don't think that succeeded for that run or that uh, error of DC Comics now, going on to number 10, which is Daredevil issue 13. This has definitely been a little lower on my list. I'm, I'm just honestly finishing it out at this point. I really kind of lost the connection to the series once this new volume started. You know, I think there's interesting concepts. There's always the Catholic concept with Daredevil. He's trying to say Foggy. He's in hell. He gets stuck in hell. But there's nothing that feels fresh and new here or even that introspective. I think they try to be introspective here, but it really just feels very surface level. The artwork is still very solid for this book. It, feels, it definitely fits the dark tone of the series, but I, I'm not really feeling the series as much as, as the first volume. And I just want to kind of see where Chip Zdarsky goes with the, the end of this run. Because like I said, I do believe it's ending soon. So that's two and a half stars, and that is number 10. Moving on to number nine, the, one of the few books that isn't being stalled during Night Terrors, and that is Steel Works Issue 2. And I think it's your average Superman book. I, what I like about this book and why I've been sticking with it is obviously to see the steals right because you don't really get to see them very often and to have them have their own series is a lot of fun and i i like their view their political view of their relationship with superman i think is interesting but 
I do think it needs to push the envelope a little bit more. I don't think it's doing that just yet, but it is giving me enough to see like, all right, where is the series going? This is a unique enough side of Superman to want me to to invest myself to see where it goes. And the artwork is honestly really solid for this book too, really bright and, and I think works for this title. So overall giving that two and a half stars and that is number nine. Moving on to number eight, another Night Terrors book, which is Batman issue one. And this is actually written by Joshua Williamson, so it's not written by Chip Zdarsky. Williamson is heading a lot of the Night Terror stories, including the main series. And with this one, we get to see what I was kind of alluding to before. Batman has to deal with the trauma of his parents' death through a nightmare. We do get to see an introduction of a new character. That's why this is a little higher than Ravager, where you're like, okay, who's Insomnia? His, you know, his outfit looks kind of cool. Let's see where that goes. But there wasn't anything about Insomnia where I'm like, whoa like let's see what's going on with this character kind of feels like a lot of the the run-of-the-mill new characters we've been getting from Batman in the past five years so that one I I I want to see where it goes at least it has a uniqueness in that but also I'm like is this really gonna go anywhere I think the only part I really felt attached to why I would want to pick up issue two is that we get to see Bruce as Joe Chill and go into his body. I'm like, all right, that's a, li a little bit of a different twist on this. So I'm like, all right, that that might make me stick around. But the artwork also wasn't, it was very dark for, for the series. I know it's Batman, but it just felt very rough because of it. So I'm going to give that two and a half stars. And that is number eight. Moving on to number seven, the highest Night Terrors book on the list. And surprisingly enough, I do not read this series. And that is Night Terrors Poison Ivy issue one. And honestly, I think that's why it was high on this list is because I don't really have any previous baggage. I don't feel like, oh man, I've been reading Poison Ivy. You stalled this story. It's more like, all right, this is like a one shot. Is it reinventing the wheel? No, but it's fun enough. It's Poison Ivy kind of living this 1950s life with Harley and Batman and Selina and they're all friends and something feels weird and off and obviously it's part of this nightmare. And the artwork was honestly really solid for this book too. I think it fit well with the gruesome visuals and actually showcasing the nightmare and what you would see in a nightmare. So I think that really worked for this, this issue. I'm interested to see where issue two will go. I don't know if it's convincing me to want to read Poison Ivy as a series, but I think this one succeeded a little bit more than the other Night Terrors books I was talking about previously. So giving that three stars, and that is number seven. Moving on to number six, which is Fence Redemption issue two. I honestly feel like this, this series has been a little slower than the previous volumes just because a, again, uh, issue, the volume one was really about when they were being released in single issues. It was about forming this team, getting to know the characters. Volume two honestly focused a lot on the fencing and you weren't reading it issue by issue. They were a graphic novel. Now volume three, we're back to the single issues and we know the characters and there's a lot of storylines they're trying to fit into one issue without really any of the fencing. It's a lot of like the BLs side of the story which I, I definitely like I think it's it's fun and I, I, I like to see the tease of the relationship but honestly I kind of like the fencing side of this book a little bit more because it is really just teasing of relationships there's not much romance actually going on I feel like it's more of like uh it's definitely not queer baiting because it's it's you're seeing the romance, but you're it's definitely teasing. <laughs> it's a lot of teasing about the romance without seeing any of the relationships. So uh, that side of the stuff I, I don't love as much, but I do like the fencing and I like the characters and their interactions, but there are just way too much going on in this. But I think the end does actually do a little bit to Nicholas's and Sejay's arc and maybe their romance as well. So giving that three stars and that is number six. Moving on to number five, and as a book that has been so delayed, um, Barnstormers issue one. This book, I, I've been, you know, I've been, I've had it on my pull list a lot of times, and, and then for some reason it, it was delayed many times. But honestly, there was something really mystical about this book that really sucked me in, where I don't know if I care for the characters yet, and I don't know if you're supposed to, but it's a this kind of Bonnie and Clyde story about this guy who flies planes and is 
dealing with the Barnstormers history. They kind of explain what Barnstormers are. That I think the book does a better job than I would tell you about it, but it's about flying and, and getting really close to people and being like a daredevil to with, with their flight. And uh, this guy, he meets this girl, of course, and she's kind of a femme fatale, and they are teaming up with each other uh, to steal money. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's fun, but there again, the, the idea I like about it is that it feels like a classic film. It feels like a... a I don't want to say Casablanca, but oh, I I feel like that's kind of the vibe it's going for. Casablanca if it meets Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, or you could just say a Bonnie and Clyde film. And and that's what I liked a lot about it, from the art to the, the type of storytelling, where I'm like, I don't know if I like you guys, but I do want to read issue two because I like the tone. It kind of feels more, again, like a film than even a comic. So overall, giving that three and a half stars, and that is number five. I'm moving on to number four which is Spider-Man issue 10. Honestly, I've been enjoying this series. I feel like it's something different without rewriting everything uh, that you ever knew about Spider-Man. It's still your run-of-the-mill Spider-Man versus Electro story, and it's like, oh, his spider sense is off. Let's, you know, try to fix that. But then you do add Spider-Boy and, and this element of this character that you do not know anything about. You're like, okay, he's maybe from another universe, but he's not because they were promised that he's not, but we've met him. It's like, who is he? And then you have the sidekick idea where, you know, we've seen this one before we've seen it with alpha so I'm, I'm a little hesitant on the sidekick stuff but I, I feel like it's fresh and and it's moving pretty well I do hope uh, he gets revealed soon so he has his own ongoing book coming up too and it, it just feels different enough but also not like betraying what spider-man is so I, I've been enjoying this series overall is it the best spider-man series I've ever read no but I think it is stronger than amazing spider-man right now so giving that three and a half stars and then it's number four Moving on to number three, which is Phantom Road, issue five. And I, I love this book. I, I, I'll continue to say the same things I always say about this book. It's haunting. It's The pacing is really brilliant because it reveals just enough, but not too much. And, and that's similar with this issue. We get to see a little bit of the past of our main character, all while the... the other character, the female character, she kills one of these phantom characters, one of these phantom creatures, and she feels guilty about it, and they kind of have to run off really quickly before she feels anything, and you're like, okay, that's interesting, I love kind of the, I usually don't say this as a compliment, but I love the muddy artwork, it fits for this blank slate type storytelling, and honestly, it just moves really well, it's a book I always love picking up, love Jeff Lemire's writing overall, so giving that four stars, and that is number three. Moving on to number two. Which was Adventures of Superman, John Kent, issue five. And honestly, if you liked Injustice Gods Among Us, this just feels like a sequel to Injustice Gods Among Us. And that is not a bad thing. I, I'm really enjoying seeing that story being picked up again through a different lens. John Kent, the and also just the main universe of DC Comics, combining with this, you know, cult classic Elseworld story written by Tom Taylor. Uh, they do a lot of great character work here where we get to see Superman want, obviously, his son. That's the whole point of this Injustice story. And he really has a soft spot for this John who wants to wreck his plans. And everyone's like, are you sure you want to protect John? And we really get to see this, this kind of chess game move forward because it really is about putting the pieces in this issue but it's a very entertaining way to do it because we get to see again the character work and we get to see how john feels about things how batman feels about things and it's a it's a good character issue with great wonderful art which injustice is is known for and, and honestly any tom taylor book is known for um having some great art collaborators so overall giving that four stars and that is number two Moving on to number one, a book that I feel like is too much under the radar. People should be picking this one up, and that is Peacemaker Tries Hard, issue three. I really like this book. If you like the show, it really picks up the tone of that very well. And honestly, even John Cena's facial expressions really well. With this one in particular, it's a really emotional issue because throughout, you know, he's kind of the butt of everyone's jokes. No one likes him and that's like the joke until it's not, until you figure out there's a human being behind it and Peacemaker's like, you know, I'm sad. Like I have no one who cares about me except this dog who got kidnapped. So he, he meets a couple of people along the way that are not his friends, but are gonna help him find his dog. And it's a really great emotional issue, and right when they hits you in the feels, there's a good joke. Uh, it's a really well done book from the artwork to, again, the, the storytelling, and I really feel like more people should be picking this one, this one up. So I'm giving that four and a half stars. That is my pick of the week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic Uno, and let me know in the comments below what your pick of the week was, and 
the viewer's pick of the week was Seasons Have Teeth, Issue 3, and here are some comments about that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Gamma Gano, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.